The hidden costs of long play times in modern gaming. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right now, ask yourself, how many games do you currently have that are halfway finished? Do you tell yourself, yeah, I'll get back to that, knowing fully... <sighs> like five? Yeah, like five. Well, you won't, or even worse, games that you'd love to play, but I've been gathering dust because you literally don't have the time to play them at all. Because I'm busy yeah, playing other games. Hey, yeah, I buy a new game, but I'm busy playing my old game. That I've fucking- I hate the game, but I play it for a thousand hours, and I just can't fucking stop playing it. Fellas, it's your friendly neighborhood circle guy, and today I want to jump into what I believe to be a massive contributor to the problem I just mentioned and spout my gaming opinions that absolutely nobody asked for. Charles, I did. It's okay. Bring me my soapbox! Get on it. I don't nice. think it is necessarily a good thing for every game to try to have hundreds of hours of gameplay. Huh, okay, let me explain. I think a lot of games have hundreds of hours of gameplay, even if they're programmed to not have hundreds of hours of gameplay. Like, for example, uh, Dark Souls. Like, a lot of people play that game over and over and over. Vampire survivors, things like that. Like, ga good games have hundreds of hours of gameplay, even if they're not supposed to. Lately, I've seen this shift in mainstream gaming, this Hail Mary attempt at a forever game, something with endless content, something you could play infinitely. And I'm not oh talking about God. games that can technically be played as long as you want. I'm specifically talking about games with an overabundance of scripted, achievable things, quests, missions, moments, you know, that juicy content. Games like Emma. See, this is the thing with me is that every time somebody brings out a game like this and I start playing it, I actually get everything. Remember in Lost Ark, everybody said, there's no way you're going to get that horse. Well, you know what? I have it. MMOs and certain RPGs aren't really new to this grind. I need you to Winners slay win. 1,000 spiders for no reason whatsoever other than to increase playtime. Yeah, that's always really dumb. Like, that's why I kind of stop farming achievements as much. Is they have, like, these achievements that just reward you for just mindlessly doing a task for no reason other than to do the achievement. Like, for example, 5,000 PvP pet battles. Completing the, uh, like, uh, what were they called? Uh, pristine artifacts and archaeology. Like, it, it's just, like, it's just designed to waste time, and it's super repetitive. And that's why I stopped doing it in WoW. In Lost Ark, I think that, like, the content wasn't really that bad. And I, I didn't mind doing the completionist content. But it's just, like, anything that you can just bot and it's just easier, I think it's probably garbage. I do the same shit as a teenager. Yeah, but I'm not. And I think most people aren't anymore, right, that play these kinds of games. So it's just like, let's do, do perform a mindless activity a thousand times. Doesn't have the same appeal that it did whenever you were 14. It's exciting. Does this come with a vest and a name tag? Because I wasn't aware I just clocked in my new place of fucking employment! Now, video game grinding has existed since the birth of at-home game consoles. Older games oh, yeah. would increase the difficulty or remove checkpoints as a way to keep the player playing, mostly due to hardware limitations. When your cartridge- Well, the thing is, though, no, no, that's actually not the reason. There are two different other reasons, too, though. Is that, number one, the super old games were really hard because they wanted people to keep putting in quarters to the arcade machine and then the developers of the Lion King for Super Nintendo one of the most notoriously difficult games went out and publicly apologized for making the game so hard that you had to rent it from Blockbuster two times to beat it so uh, there are actually it was not I mean like yeah maybe some of it was tech requirements etc but that wasn't the whole story housed a few megabytes of storage, sometimes kilobytes, it was up to the developer on how to keep you tethered while simultaneously making sure you didn't blaze through the game. Yeah. It was clever, often bullshit, but an oh, understandable Commander practice. King. This Remember isn't that. necessarily what I'm getting at here, but it's the foundation of this fabricated playtime that I want to jump into. It matters knowing this, but being able to differentiate this somewhat necessary archaic version and the new abomination we'd later receive. But uh -huh. sure, I get it. We want our games to last a while. We never want fun experiences to end, and on top of that we also want some bang for our buck nothing feels worse than being hyped for a game for months just to have it last a few hours but i got some issues with how i feel like if you're done with a game within a few hours it's probably because you don't like the game most games have probably 20 to 30 hours of gameplay in them 
just in general like I, I would say most most games that come out that are fully produced I'd say double like any a like double a single a triple a games you have about 20 30 hours of gameplay on them however there's a handful that don't absolutely you're right but in general I think that's the case Every single goddamn game is expected to last forever now. Live service games. Games drip yeah. feeding their players with season after season of updates. Reuse content. Weird time consuming systems where they don't need to be. Crafting and literally fucking. Uh, I mean, I would say, I, I mean, this is V Rising. I think you want to talk about time consuming crafting systems. Talk about Hogwarts Legacy. Because V Rising is a survival game. And part of survival is crafting time. Now, obviously, this is a spectrum, and certain things go too far off the spectrum, and they're bad, but I would say the V Rising crafting was not really that bad. Uh, you know, I'd say Hogwarts Legacy, a completely single-player game, there is no reason for a crafting time to be more than two seconds for just an animation. Everything, it seems! Quit it with the fucking crafting! God! And this isn't even the end of it. Even before updates and additional content post-launch, every game is expected to also release with enough content to keep you busy until you're fucking dead. Some of you may think, well, isn't it good to strive for more rather than to settle for less? And that- Not always, because whenever you strive for more, a lot of times what ends up happening is that the quality is bad. I think that Elden Ring is a great example of this. Elden Ring has some of the best bosses, and I think it's the highest quality game from software has ever made, and nothing, nothing else even comes close, but there is something to be said for the beauty and simplicity of a Dark Souls 3 Sekiro experience, where it is defined, ordered, specific, and complete. And, and Elden Ring is great for what it is, but you cannot tell me that half of those fucking catacombs and caves needed to be there. Let's be honest. I love Elden Ring. It's the best game ever. But let's be honest. It's filler content. Would be the case if it weren't for the glaring fact that this current time sucking content hellscape is lowering the quality of games across the board consistently. Not only do so many games try to promise this unobtainable content paradise, but yeah. nearly all of them fail when they do. Content gets rushed, recycled, or even cut and resold later well, it's on. It's usually just recycled. That's the problem. And so much of this stuff is just straight recycling. At an additional cost. A finished game filled with a ton of content and post launch content on the way being developed during a spike in crunch culture is the single worst recipe an evil witch could brew up in her comically. Yeah, exactly. And then as soon as the game comes out and it's not fixed, the people that develop it get shit on whenever it was probably the production that really forced them into it. And the reason why Elden Ring gets a pass on this kind of stuff and people still think it's the greatest game ever is because Elden Ring has the unnecessary necessary like pointless filler content on top of the s tier gameplay core experience like if you took all of the uh, like all of that stuff straight out of the game it would still be an s tier game absolutely and that's why people are okay with it with Elden Ring, but they weren't as okay with it with, like, Hogwarts Legacy, for example. Because Hogwarts Legacy had, like, ten different mobs, and that was it. Well, I haven't played Warframe. I can't compare with that. Large evil cauldron. <laughs> what are we making, Master? <laughs> Infinite Radiant Quest! So, what exactly is content? Nowadays, games want to be- I think, uh, Blizzard really, uh, shit the bed with achievements. And, uh, I, I would say it really started in Warlords of Draenor, where they really just decided to waste your time with achievements. And it just kind of got worse after that. Achievements were best in, like, Cataclysm. Or they were best in, like, Wrath and Cataclysm. And then, uh, about halfway through Cataclysm, they started adding these, like, massive like super long time sync achievements that take no degree of skill or effort or anything to achieve other than simply a participation reward for people that have no respect for their own time that is achievement grinding and that's why i stopped caring about it as much it's sad 
buffet of content where not really much of it is that great, but oh wow, holy shit, there's so much here. They even yeah. got that weird ass dumpling with old meat in it. Sometimes they'll even add to it and drip feed paid content like battle passes, and other times Ooh. they'll have seasonal events meant to weaponize FOMA. Ooh. I know this argument has been made about DLC and pre order expansion passes and stuff, but I think the real issue here has been brushed under the rug, and that's the fact that more games today are attempting to steal your attention forever, and almost no game can do that through quality. Far Cry 6, Dying Light 2, Ghostwire Tokyo, Horizon Forbidden West, Watch Dog Legion, Days Gone, Outriders, Biomutant, Gotham Knights, basically every single Assassin's Creed game ever made, and especially Death Stranding. You know what all of these games have in common? The fact that if you removed half of the content, you'd only be improving the final product. If your game... That's probably true. Uh, I, I think that's definitely true with a lot of cases is that you have extra content added into the game that just makes the experience worse and makes it take longer. Uh, I, I think that's definitely true. Like making something that is incredibly concise is actually like writing something this long is sometimes easier than writing something this long. And being able to be concise and controlled with like exactly what words you use and the way that you use them, that in my opinion is like that. That's like the that that instead of just like you know being that that's like that's elegance, right? And there are certain games that really are great with that elegance, and other games that are not. Like Sekiro, yeah, Sekiro is perfect. Things. I want to see them. Why would you hide them behind walls of garbage filler? And of course, I don't expect every game to blow my mind every 10 milliseconds like a toddler with short term memory loss. Yeah, sure. That's not the issue. And dude, I understand online multiplayer and single player games have vastly different expectations mm -hmm. and common features, but I'm yeah, conflating the two mostly because this issue is prevalent in both. What I'm getting at is. One day I will be dead. One day I will be cuddled up with the worms and moles of the Ooh. world. But before that inevitable day comes, I will be enjoying video games as much as I can. And when I have to balance my work, social life, sleep, and other stuff with video games, that leaves me with an extremely small. And this is the problem. Of time for those games. And when I what the hell? Sorry, I, I don't know how that was happening. I think that my space bar stuck. Um, what I was trying to say is that. Um, let me go back. I, I forgot because the audio thing. Sleep and other stuff with video games. That is my key. Is my space bar messed up? Extremely small sliver of time. Oh right. Uh, no, it it should be fine. I think my space bar is messed up. The problem is like if you make a super concise and clean game like what this guy is talking about. The problem is that there's a lot of uh, a lot of people on Twitter. They're gonna say, "Oh yeah, I played your game. I beat it in 12 hours. It's a bad game. You stole my money because I'm not playing it for 30 hours or sorry, 300 hours." So it's like it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Because if you make a game that has pseudo infinite content, then you're gonna have people that are mad because it's either repetitive or lower quality. And if you make a game that's extremely concise and short, but it's good, then people are going to complain that it's too short. So I think the real problem is, uh, honestly, it's developers that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Because I think that you can make a very, very good game that's short. I think a great example of this, I haven't played it yet, I promised I would, but a lot of people have told me that Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a very short game, but it's very good. And there's like nobody that plays that and says like, oh, well, this game wasn't worth it, right? It was it was garbage. I think Devil May Cry is probably going to be like that, too. So Remnant's short as fuck. <laughs> Not if you play it on Apocalypse mode the first time you ever played the fucking game. You don't know anything about the game. Then no, it's not short. But yeah, besides that, maybe it is short. And also Remnant's different because it has semi, uh, it has like semi roguelike features. Uh, another one like this, people said that uh, Mage Seeker, that new Riot game, was much more of a shorter game, and they said it wasn't worth it. So many other games are like that too. So yeah, just keep in mind, this is one of the reasons, and developers have to balance this all the time. Now, I don't envy this position. ...for those games, and when I expand that inner sliver, you're gonna see I don't have a lot of time to fuck around doing nothing in them! And that's yep. coming from a dude where video games is a portion of my job. This is even worse for everyone else. There exactly. is so much fluff, filling, padding, and stuffing in modern video games, and the longer a game's average playtime gets, the more you're gonna find it. Waiting to make something, forced long travel, backtracking, randomly imposed mm -hmm. roadblocks that only exist to increase game length. Act 1 Starter Bundle? See, this is why I never gave a fuck, bro. 
Like, everybody gets mad about Rings of Power. I treat Rings of Power like I treat these fucking uh, Lord of the Rings video games. Bro, this is fan fiction. Maybe we'll get a couple of real... Remember that cool frame of Sauron at the beginning of Rings of Power? That was universally fucking awesome, okay? So we get like 10 of those, and then everything else is garbage. As a kid, these things are awesome because you have all the time in the world. But when I hop on a game now for two hours and get almost nothing done, I feel like a damn stooge. Nowadays, someone will recommend me a game like, Yeah, it's pretty good. It's only about six hours long, but... What did you just say? It's only about six, six hours. six hours long? <laughs> you don't know how much I needed to hear that. What the hell is wrong with you? Because it's a goal that's actually attainable. Jumping back to that... Yeah, that's what Emmy told me about uh, Undertale, is that Undertale is a short game. I I apparently need to play this game. I originally saw my friend Eric playing Undertale, and I thought that it looked like a video game for vegans. But apparently people like it. We'll have to try it. Backlog of unfinished games I previously mentioned in the intro. Really think back to those games. How often were you actually immersed or engaged in the gameplay? How often were you experiencing something new or innovative? Or did you maybe abandon the game due to its overabundance of slog and you never even got to the good advertised stuff whatsoever? You see, have I had that happen where I stopped playing a game because it, it was such a slog? Hmm. Wulong? Nope, I beat the whole thing. Code Vein? No, I just mauled it out, and I just got bored playing it. I will eventually go back and play that game again. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV? No, I, I, that, was just, that was a stream thing. That's different. I don't know. I, I'm sure there's probably, like, one or two of them that I played. Witcher 3? No, that's that was, that was a stream thing, too. I don't know. I'd have to really think about it. Right there. That is the issue here. It's not expanding the playability, it's restricting it. As I get older, I realize games that have 10 hours of excellent content will almost always be better than games with 30 hours of excellent content and 70 hours of fucking padding. But look, it has 100 hours of content. Isn't that outstanding? Deathloop is a great example of a game with backtracking, but simultaneously staying fresh, short, interesting, and concise with its gameplay. Hopping on for an hour and finishing five extremely varied fun missions before putting down the controller feels a whole lot better than starting up a mission to listen to a dude talk for 48 minutes while I slowly follow him to a destination to retrieve something stupid and walk all the way back. And listen, I'm not saying RPGs or yeah. farming games that go on for billions of hours shouldn't exist. I mean, Christ, I love RPGs, obviously. They I think that there's definitely a place for games like that too, though. They have their place just as much as short indie experiences do, but my problem is this massive middle blob of games that want to be anything in every I do have to say... And I am the biggest simp. Elden Ring has a lot of bloat in it. It does. The only reason people are okay with it is because the game is so fucking good. Everything and succeed at nothing while simultaneously being just, I don't know, boring. It seems so many games don't know what they want to be anymore. Video game genres yeah. as a whole seem to be losing their identity. Ah, yes, my first person. Sh well, I think it's because so many video game genres are overlapping with each other now. Like a lot of games are RPGs, many games are turning into MMOs. I think like you're seeing a lot of that with online games. You see that kind of with something like Genshin Impact. It's not an MMO by any stretch, but people play it kind of like that. Uh, you see that with um, uh, Diablo 4. I think Diablo 4 is the best example. Uh, PoE is you have like these online multiplayer role-playing games, and they are massive, they are multiplayer, but they're not an MMO like Final Fantasy XIV or, or World of Warcraft is. So yeah, you're seeing a lot of blurring of lines. Shooter racing farming Rogue sim. Likes this too, game should you know? have RPG elements and base building. Thank God I added multiplayer. You're going to want to pre-order for early access to the V12 eggplant shotgun. There's never enough time to oh, do God. everything you want. <laughs> The industry is curving in a way where it's becoming far more acceptable to release a game half-baked with the Yeah, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Like, I, I was thinking about, like, how long it would take for me to go back and beat a lot of the old games. And, like, I bet it probably wouldn't take me that long to beat Ocarina of Time again. It, it, it would take me, like, one day to beat Super Mario World. And, like, all of the Mario games. Like, I feel like I could beat... Um... Like, Mario 1... Mario 2 was really long. Mario 2 would probably take more than one day. Uh, Mario 3 would be one day. 
Uh, it, I mean, like, maybe two days if I didn't do, use any of, like, the little fucking, the flutes. Uh, let's see. Super Mario World. Yoshi's Island probably be two days, because you have, like, all those extra missions at the end. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, they weren't really that super long. But they were just amazing, incredible games. Yeah, I was watching, like, Miz play Super Mario 64 today, and I was like, maybe, maybe I should go and do a 120-star run and just play through the entire game. Because I never did that whenever I was a kid. I never got every single star. So fixing it or improving it later on than to delay yeah, or take all the, the Mega time Man games. A Holy fuck. Art. Ah, back in the day, we didn't get updates, patches and performance updates outside of uh, the The one I really the ones that I really want to go through, I'm going to be real. I want to go through all the, the the Castlevania games. Like bro, like I I I I only had like two of them growing up. I want to play all the old ones. Because I think they're just, I love the aesthetic. I think it's fucking awesome. Occasional international release changes, you had to make sure whatever was on that disc or cartridge was worthy of its price tag. And often it wasn't, in fairness. But this Rush Games out the door time crunching Superman development 64. hell world we live in was partially forged in the same crucible that invented the notion that every game must last forever. You know, it actually made me happy yeah. to hear when God of War Ragnarok got delayed. Most of the time, delays are. Well, it's also like games last, like Super Mario 64 is a great example of that. People are playing Super Mario 64 way more than a lot of the live service games today. Why is that? It's because, and, and Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1 is actually a relatively short game, uh, assuming you only do the, uh, um, the necessities. But the people replay it constantly because a game, will, a great game will create its own replay value. Positive. Waiting for a refined product will always be better than getting an underdeveloped mess quicker. Ugh, but gamers suck. Gamers are seriously my least favorite group of people, and I should- Yeah, this is- yeah, game developers. There's nothing that game developers hate more than gamers. No, I'm sadly one of them. No matter what you try to do, they'll never be happy. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, which route developer release the game too soon and get shit on, or delay a game and still get shit on? Always delay. By the way, this is not a decision. Always delay. Every single time. Never don't delay. Look at what happened with New World. Look at what happened with Cyberpunk. Look at what happened with... I, I don't really know if it got rushed out too early, but uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, look at what happened with PUBG. PUBG got rushed out for the holiday season. I remember that. Anybody that played the game back then knew that shit was not ready. Uh, let's see. Lost. Well, I think Lost Ark was pretty much ready. Redfall. Redfall just came out this week or last week, and it was obviously not fucking ready. Uh, Overwatch 2. Like, remember? Do you guys remember? Bro, do, does anybody remember back whenever Blizzard said that there would be PvE content for Overwatch 2? Because it was just so long ago, and then they said it's going to come out at the beginning of next year, and that was last year? What the fuck, man? We still don't have it. Choice is yours, my friend! Speaking of crunch, while writing this video, me and my friends made the extremely poor decision of firing up Anthem. Remember that travesty? It's on Game Pass anyway, and we did this on the condition that we'd only check out the mainline content. None of the grindy, worthless yeah, yeah. crap. Because yeah, mech suits that fly around controlling the fucking weather that is, is pretty cool. badass. Yeah. And you know what we learned? The art design is breathtaking. The sound design is superb. The game plays and feels amazing. Everything is snappy and crisp. Just flying around is enjoyable. But you yeah. know what isn't enjoyable? The fact that this game went through development hell trying to be a destiny killer by adding grindy unintuitive stupid systems that uproot you from the actual fun moments just to shove some ui disaster or worthless dialogue in your face you know what a really good game is i was actually i'm thinking about anthem right you know what a really good game is that was like concise and gave you upgrades similar to how this is ratchet and clank do you guys remember how fucking goaded that game was it was insane like, I, I, dude, I, I, oh my god, I love that game so much. It was fucking ridiculously good. And it never wasted your time with this bullshit. Any 
Anytime you're caught red-handed having fun, the game forces Jack you to Jackster. stop everything really you're doing so you can go I, played, not I have, have the first fun. one. But that's it. Thank God, fellas. No, I, I forgot the these one. games were yeah, supposed yeah. to make me miserable. What? These types of games hold the concept of end game content over your head as if you yeah. have to sift through the garbage to make it to the real game. But guess what, dipshit? I didn't make it to the end game content because the base game fucking And this is also a problem where like you have gamer like gamer elitism where they think that it's some kind of test of valor or a test of metal that you're willing to allow your time to be wasted long enough to be able to be able to be able to deserve to play the fun part of the game. It's so fucking cringe. This is what I was saying before with Diablo and how like the idea that in Diablo 4 that like, oh, it's okay that a class is bad until it gets to like level 75. Fuck that. It should be good at level one. Why should any class be bad at any level? Just buff the spells. Suck! Anthem could have been an extremely fun 8 to 10 hour co-op action game, but we just couldn't have that, because Bioware was apparently visited by three ghosts that night. The ghost of a worthless open world, the ghost of repetitive missions, and the ghost of tedious, stupid crafting! <sighs> yep. What matters- Every game that- every single player game that's not an MMO that you buy and sell things with other players that has crafting in it. Every time I open up the menu, I'm like, oh, God. <sighs> At the end of all of this, that's how is I, that we I hate all that. need to unanimously push for. In the way this segment Cohesive hopefully ties package. a bow around the point I'm making, the vision of every game also needs to find its little bow. <laughs> oh, look at him go. Oh, whoa, the shit. Vision. I firmly believe aimless single-player checklist games are some of the worst games ever made. They don't respect your... They can be okay. Like, for example, I, I played a lot of these, like, you know, single-player checklist type stuff. I don't mind it that much as long as there's, like, a... Uh, there's, like, cool rewards at the end of it. And, like, the world is nice to explore and run around in. Like, that's what I really care about. I mean, like, for example, I'll play, uh, you know, I was playing, like, Wuthering Waves, uh, the beta for it. And it's nice to go around in the world and just explore and do stuff. So as long as the game feels good to play and good to explore, then I think it's okay to have that stuff for people that enjoy it. But it should never take precedence over the real content time they don't strive for anything meaningful they're a job with no pay and a boss that demands too much of you these yeah. forever endlessly supported multiplayer games would always rather drag a carrot on a stick than actually make worthwhile gameplay features there is a wealth of outstanding yeah and the problem is like once people realize there's a carrot on a stick just to be able to play the game they lose interest with it this is i think a problem that path of exile has too is that for some builds in order for them to be like really fun you have to invest like a week of time into the game. And I just think that's too much time for a lot of people. And maybe that's not what their audience is supposed to be. Maybe, you know, they're, they're happy with what they have, etc. But I do find it disappointing that, you know, as somebody who's been, you know, I supported PoE in the closed beta, right? I had $20 in my bank account. I gave them 15 to keep playing it. So I, I'm a huge supporter of PoE. I played it for years. I've donated like a thousand fucking dollars to them, bought in all the microtransactions. I've got t-shirts, et cetera. They've even sent me some. So shout out to PoE for that. Uh, either way, um, huge fan of the game. Love the fucking game. However, I think that there's a lot of things they could add to the game that would make it more accessible for casual players that would still maintain, you know, 30 minute build guide spreadsheet simulators. Okay. I, I think you can have both. And it's disappointing to see, you know, so many unnecessary pitfalls. AAA and indie games that don't fall into this massive, all-consuming category that I challenge you to seek out and enjoy. Here's an extremely varied list of games that properly appreciate your time, that you can utilize as medicine whenever you feel yourself okay. falling into these traps. Deathloop, Dislilusium, Stray. I never played Stray. I remember people complained about Stray because it didn't have enough content in it. Uh, which is ironic, right? Uh, let's see here. Deep Rock Galactic people are really... <laughs> Dude, the guy that came over and um, he was like uh, he was like doing like pest control for me because I had like... like I woke up one day and there were eight wasps in my house. And so, uh, you know, a lot of problems I ignore. That one I fucking didn't. 
So I, I called him out there and he, he sees like my setup. He's like, oh, you're a streamer? I'm like, yeah, I stream. He's like, bro, have you played Deep Rock Galactic? And I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, no, I haven't. He's like, dude, me and my friends play it. It's so good. You've got to play it, man. It's so good. And I never have. I, eventually, one day I will. I think there's also Stanley Parable is a great example. I really like that one a lot. I think also in terms of old games, you've got a ton of old Super Nintendo games that absolutely respect your time. Now listen, I know this list is psychotic, Stone, unorganized, yeah, and truly deranged, but I think these games perfectly emphasize what I'm talking about. All of these games are super fun, and they're consistently fun and diversely engaging the whole time despite being extremely different from one another. And just as a Stand wise man cool. once said, if the game's not fun, why bother? Yeah. Yeah, if it's not fun, what's the point? That's a great fucking question. What a good video, man. What a great fucking video. I like this a lot. Let me link it to you guys. Make sure to give it some support. Yeah, Jump King. I'm not a Jump King kind of guy, but I respect the game. Yeah, this is awesome. Rip Reggie. Well, Reggie didn't die. He just uh, he retired, right? I mean, shit. <clears throat> man, I hate side quests. Complain about side quests. They don't have to play. Well, the problem is like... You can't put rewards in a game and then get mad at the player for feeling like they're missing out for not getting those rewards. I, I just I think that's like such a weird paradox where, you, oh, we're going to put these things in the game and make them compelling. But if you do them and you don't like it, then you're stupid. Well, wait a second. Then why put them in the game? I, I think that a lot of times, especially with like, you know, more complex games, you can remove a lot of systems in a game, and it will not affect the game at all. Like, I've said this with, uh, with PoE. Like, you can remove um, spell block, and you can remove uh, spell suppression. You can take these out of the game, and then just put that value inside of resistances, and I think the game will just be better. Straight up, I think it will just be better. I know people might not like it, but that's what I think. Four different things, three different things to do the exact same fucking thing, which, which is reducing magic damage. Holy fuck, why do we need this? It is insane. It's the same thing with uh, wards in New World. Do you really think people want to farm out multiple different sets of gear that have all the exact same stats, except for one says you take less damage from Angry Earth and the other one says you take less damage from Corrupted? Get the fuck out of here. It's garbage. It's the same thing as stuff in WoW with like Azerite gear. They fixed that though. Let's see. What else besides that? Uh, how many other good examples do I have? Those are probably the top two examples I could come up with. But yes, there are things in video games where like the developer programs in a problem and then they program a solution in to solve the problem. When the real solution is to just take the problem out entirely. Why, why does the problem even exist? What, what, like, if you took this out, would the game be better? I think the answer to that would be yes. Absolutely yes. Some people like problem solving, though. And it's always going to be, here's the thing, right? Is that, is the problem solving experience? So I, I think that a really great example of this is like potions and Valheim, like vanilla Valheim. So if you remember potions and vanilla Valheim, they were effectively a pass-fail mechanic, where if you had this potion, the spell damage did, like, nothing, and if you didn't have the potion, the spell damage would kill you. Like, for example, you ever, like, used the poison potion, and, like, you had to deal with, like, poison mobs in swamp, and they did nothing to you, but if you didn't have the potion, you could get bit by one leech that had no stars, and it would just one-shot you. It was dog shit, right? It's just total fucking dog shit. So, I don't like especially it becomes bad if it's like a pass fail mechanic that is just a time sink in farming like the anixia sale cloak anixia scale cloak kind of makes sense because you need it contextually in order to like tear out progression in the game but and also a lot of people don't know that you can avoid shadow breath uh on Farian. you just go behind the throne and so the only the tanks actually really need it, it they actually are the only ones that need it and so you don't have to farm it out for everybody. So yeah, 
Um, flares and Lost Ark. Yeah, Flares and Lost Ark are a great example. Are Flares and Lost Ark necessary? No, they're not. No, if you took Flares out and then you just had the Guardian spawn and you knew where it was, the game would instantly be better. It adds no gameplay. It adds nothing. It's just a problem that they created for you to solve. It's nothing. And I, I think that, it, you know, conversely, like pheromones uh, that you use in Lost Ark is actually kind of good because it's a, uh, it's a time saver. However, it's not necessary. But if you're min-maxing, you can use them. I think pheromones are good. Flares are bad. And I think that it, it, it determines, like, like binary things, like, uh, like binary pass-fail things, like potions in Valheim on, on vanilla. That's the kind of stuff that I don't like. When are you going to make the perfect game? Really soon.